my, my mantra is if you run into the same issue two or three times, there has to be a systematic solution to either eliminate the problem or to at least minimize the impact of that problem. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, STR Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I am your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's up, E? My brother. So good to see you. Um, I love Thursdays, man. Like We just got off the uh, our seven-figure boardroom call, and dude, I am so proud of like just every week next man, level they stuff on there man bro, bro they're nothing. like they're blowing my mind like just this this you know the interest in in, in what, whatever that like the complication of like the problems that people are getting over and just the sheer opportunity that is out there um so yeah man feeling inspired by that and just super grateful you know it's like the end of the year and we talked about this yesterday as well it's just like i i love to reflect on like what the year was and the year was definitely interesting um and lots of opportunities on different kinds, you know, but again, like I would pay to have what I have five years ago, three years ago. Right. So just keeping all of that into like perspective, you know, mm -hmm. and just starting to gear out 2023, what, what's on the schedule, the trips and the vacations and, you know, coming up to Orlando in January for the seven figure event. We have Nashville in March. So there is a lot of fun stuff going on. Um, so yeah, man, just kind of starting to like unwind and get kind of centered and grateful for the year that we've had and just seeing, you know, like what's, what's out there, you know? hundred percent, dude. Yeah. Excited. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So I'm feeling the same. I'm, I'm jacked up, had, had that really good call and just excited and, um, I've got Caden's school play tomorrow. So I'm pretty, pretty psyched for that. Oh. They're, they're doing uh an elvis theme play which i thought was interesting but uh they're gonna be wow. they're gonna be jamming out some elvis songs with all the all the munchkins so that'll be very entertaining for that a little bit good. tomorrow so but yeah man I'm, I'm excited for our guest today it's been i don't know how we haven't had him on yet quite frankly um but i'm, I'm excited that he's here with us so today we've got john ann he is a short-term rental industry expert with particular focus in optimizing and customizing the technology stack, driving up revenue and continually streamlining operations. Talking my jam right there. Leveraging his experience in building, growing, and operating a successful and profitable short-term rental brand from the ground up. He's constantly utilizes his own short-term rental business as a fertile testing ground to roll up his sleeves and dig in to experiment with new systems, technologies, and approaches. Mm -hmm. He's advised many of the technology companies informing product roadmap features, nuances, uh, nuanced usability for short-term rental operators. And without further ado, John, welcome to the show, sir. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, E. I'm so excited to be on the show. Um, you know, I, I've been wanting to chat with you guys, and finally, it's happening. Um, yeah. So it's, well, we've we've chatted quite a bit over the years. I don't. I just don't know how you didn't end up on the show. Like I, I just assumed that we had you already. But I'm glad. I, think that I was just too shy. <laughs> <laughs> and now we get you out of your shell, so you can share all your goodness with everybody. So. Um, why don't we just start from the beginning, man? So like we were talking offline about this, you know, how did you get started with short-term rentals? Yeah. Like most people who got into short-term rentals, I stumbled upon it. Right. So, um, I used to be, I'm an architect by training and I had a nine to five and then I, I was a consultant, uh, in the sustainability world lead, you know, and I worked with a lot of developers, some really terrible developers that, you know, that everyone thinks of, and then some really great developers that added to their communities and everything. So I quit my nine to five and I had a real estate business where I was building ground up new construction homes. And when you're developing, money's always flowing out until you sell. And I didn't like that, about that, that business model. And so short-term rental was literally a side, you know, 
side real estate related uh, business that could generate positive cash flow to supplement the development business. So um, my first short term rental property was in Hawaii, in Honolulu, Hawaii. And, you know, like most other investors, I hired a manager to take care of things after I purchased it. And it exceeded my investment expectations, but the management was just terrible. And so one by one, I started to take over first guest communication. And then to do that, I need to work with the technology and everything. So basically my journey in the short-term rental industry has literally been me just building little pieces on top of each other, just so that I can run my, my business in Hawaii. Love that. And so when, when did you, when did you get your first deal? And then where are you at right now as far as like deals and locations? Right. So I started about seven years ago, I believe. Uh, and that was the first property in Honolulu. Uh, I was a small studio just to get my feet wet. Um, and just as a side note, I looked at the zoning and everything to stay, you know, 100% code compliant and everything at that point, because New York city was cracking down on short term rentals. Um, and now there's a new regulation that's threatening a lot of short term rentals in Honolulu. So even being cautious, you know, that uh, it's, that's not enough. Uh, so the goal was to add one property. The, the goal was just ownership, right? Own and manage was to add one property per year and just kind of slowly grow that portfolio. Um, and I was on track for that. And then COVID hit and, um, and that kind of switched the purchasing, you know, property, uh, model. And so right now I, I decided to stay just focused in Honolulu. Um, 10 properties total between managing or co-hosting other people as well as my own. So I own three and then co-host for uh, seven other folks. Um, the claim to fame for that small portfolio size is um, on average, each of my properties generate around $200,000 uh, gross revenue per year. And so I don't need that many properties to have a, you know, a decent at least living, living wage. Right. And so that's kind of the balance that, you know, that I, I tried to strike. I love it. I love it. And, um, you're a tech guy. You love the tech. You and I always talk tech and, um, tell me like how that, how that journey went for you. Right. Of like testing, what'd you say you tested like 15 PMSs or something crazy? Yeah, so that so painful to me. Oh like, my god! Like the idea I've done like three or four, and I'm like cringing at the thought of that. It's like oh just my like god, fifteen, and just like just so much, you know. Well, that just shows how stupid I am, right? Most people learn <laughs> learn after you know one, two, maybe three times they settle and they say, you know what, that perfect technology doesn't exist. I was very stubborn, and I said. Hey, there's so many smart people out there building all these softwares, right? Like it's got to exist. Uh, and so, you know, I, I onboarded onto one, something didn't work. So I switched and switched and switched. Um, the, the perspective that I have, the reason why, like, what, what I've come to realize is they're just, it, it's almost impossible for the perfect software to exist. And it's not because the technology, you know, vendors are not doing a good job. It's everyone in this industry kind of fell into it, at least up till now, right? There's no school for short-term rentals. And so everyone operates differently and they kind of came up with their own approaches on the one hand. And then for the technology guys, they have to make decisions on features, how those features work and everything. So there's this mismatch. So while one PMS works really well for me, because that's how my, my workflow is built around. It might be terrible for you guys because your workflow is completely different. And so for people to say, hey, you know, what PMS should I use? Do you use that one? That's almost like the worst way to pick technology because one person's experience will be completely different from another person's uh, expectations and experience. Yeah, that's such an important thing because I think that's one of the questions that I see asked the most throughout all the different groups and communities that I'm a part of and in our community as, as well, is that question. What is the best property management software? 
then there's the people that are like, is this one? No, is this one? And just like, maybe, you know, but at the same time, my, my personal belief is very similar to yours, John. And that's why, um, I am, I wouldn't call you stupid. I think you were like uh, in, in the search for like that perfect <laughs> utopian kind of like property management software. Whereas like I, I, I was coming from Excel phone calls, credit card forms. So to me, any system has been life-changing. And it's just like, it's one, it's the system that works for your business. And two, it's the that you use. Because again, like you can have Guesty and have all the features, the best things ever, or hostfully or whatever it is. And either one, you don't know how to use all the features that you have access to, or two, some features are not the right features for you. Maybe you'll be better off with a simpler PMS that works in your favor on the business that you want. Right. So having learned that, how did your next technology company, I assume, right? Can we call it a company? Yeah. Yep. Where, where did that idea come from? So you're like, okay, I've tried 15 of them. I hate <laughs> them all or kind of some of them I hate, some of them I love. And so what was that line of thinking there? Yeah. So, um, to put it into kind of a structured format. Yeah. The reason why I kept on changing PMSs was, you know, communication and the calendar would be working well. But then, you know, the next one said that they had an accounting feature. And I was like, oh, it would be great to have accounting built, built in, right? So then you change and then you see that, okay, you get the accounting feature. But now that guest communication, which was working really well for you, it's shifted. And so now it doesn't work for you anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And so that kept on happening every, every time I shifted, you know, one, two, three, four, five, I kept, so it was this moving target where I couldn't just go by the feature list that the company had or the testimonials that people, uh, created. And so after banging my head against the wall for my own company, for Ohana stay, my management company, what I started doing inadvertently was I would find like the best in class solution for whatever problem I was having that was not part of that, that technology. And then build out ways for it to communicate. That's why I call it semi-customized, right? It's not like this like pristine, you know, hard coded solution, mm -hmm. but making a way to kind of make the, those two technologies talk to each other so that it, it solves my problem. Right? So tech tape is the name of the company and it's, pl it's a play on words of duct tape, right? So from the get-go, I'm, I'm very honest. It's not, you know, I'm using things like Zapier and other, you know, other tools that are out there that everyone else has access to, but I'm making them dance together to get the results that you want, right? Mm -hmm. So I was building these workflows for my own business. And even my VAs in the Philippines are like, oh my God, how are you making this work, right? And they've, they've worked with lots of different uh, property management companies. And so that's what, you know, I, I've been doing. And then other property managers started seeing it. And even on their Ohana say, I actually provided this service to other, other property management companies just, you know, as a favor, as a friend and everything. And it worked and it solved problems. And then, so that's how I came up with the idea. There is this kind of missing link of solving people's technology problems. Um, Either people settle for technology that don't work for them because it's, you know, too much of a headache to switch mm -hmm. or they end up switching all the time, you know, like, like I, I did. Right. Or they, yeah, they like have workflows that don't work for them and it spends a lot of time and energy within their company to get that piece done. And so that's where, you know, I was like, you know what, there is a missing, you know, missing link in the industry. There's a lot of amazing creative uh, solutions out there, Enzo Connect, Mount, DAC, you know, all these like creative solutions that are out there. But then if they're not connected with, integrated with your PMS and people are like, oh, I can't use it, right? You can. And if you can bring those pieces together, you can have access to all the, all the creative tools that are out there. Yeah. Is there one integration that you guys see that you create more often than not? Like, is there one of your like, this is like our most popular integration that seems to be used by most people or it's, has it been mostly just super custom to a specific client? The one that 
I think happens most is creating some sort of payment processing workflow, right? So Mike, we were just chatting about this before the, before the call, but, um, so basically when people are, when the guest books and they have, uh, you know, options to kind of select, not upsells, but, um, you know, things that they want during their stay, um, a lot of companies have that as kind of a manual process right now. Um, you know, you have to call, get the credit card number and process, you know, the payment and then confirm that that's happened. And so that's one workflow where we've, we've streamlined it. Um, a guest books, they're directed to a form that they can fill out. They check off the things that they want, put in their credit card information that gets processed. And then if, if it's processed correctly, then a message, a confirmation message goes both to the guest and to the, um, to the property manager. Now, something that took probably about a one, one to two hours worth of man hours to, you know, maybe not that long, maybe one hour, you know, man hour just happens automatically. Right. And it's, it's little, little things like that, that aren't when you have one or two properties, it's not that daunting. As you're getting more and more properties, that starts taking over your your business almost. And those are the types of things that clients are almost switching PMSs simply to solve that problem. And it's something that you can, you know, kind of create that workflow and solve. Well, I was gonna say, like at the beginning, you know, if you're a smaller operator, you know, you kind of don't know what you don't know. Like you're still figuring it out. But definitely like as you scale, there's all these things that happen that are like just ways to create efficiency, right? Like we use monday.com for a lot of our task management with the VA. So like getting like reservations to come over to Monday and just different things like that or integrating with accounting softwares and all these other things that you can do becomes a pain in the ass as you scale. And it will save you so much time if you can automate it instead of having to do it manually with your team. That's, that's the short-term rental business has so many moving parts, right? Like tons and tons of moving parts. But the vast majority of it is predictable, right? And so when people stumble into the business, it's very easy to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to roll out of bed. And I'm going to go plunge that toilet. You know what? I'm going to send that email manually. You could do a lot of things manually and make it work. And, you know, it doesn't seem like that much work, but that whole thing is very linear if you don't automate it. And so that's where you try it. My, my mantra is if you run into the same issue two or three times, there has to be a systematic solution to either eliminate the problem or to at least minimize the impact of that problem, right? Mm. And so anytime we run into... No, that's, that's a good quote. Can you say that again? Because that's really good. And you don't have to say it the same way, but like that's right. really important for people to understand in terms of like growing and scaling a business, how important that is. Yeah, so if, you, if, if you're running into a problem and you, you've seen that problem before, if you just solve it just to solve it at that point, that's like running into the wall, like constantly I don't, thinking one day you're going to walk through the wall and it's not mm -hmm. going to happen, right? So then you're like, okay, we saw the same problem happen. What are the triggers that are triggering this problem? And what are the things that we can do proact proactively in advance? Ideally to eliminate it, but some things you can't eliminate. Mm -hmm. But you can at least minimize the the impact of that problem. Yeah. And so if you build, you know, workflows or systems or, you know, things around it, it's kind of like this constant improvement of your business because the problems are telling you where you need to focus your, your energy and effort. You don't have to artificially create this roadmap, right? It's like, I ran into this problem three times. All right, let's fix it. All right, move on, move on, move on. Yeah. So that's the mentality that I use both my uh, management business, but particularly in growing uh, tech tape. Yeah. And I think, and I think you've, you've hit on something that is important for people to understand when you're trying to scale is the fact that like sometimes the problems that you're running into and you keep running into happen because you're not doing what you need to do to kind of fix it. One of the most basic ones is like, I guess, guest gets locked out. You don't have an extra key uh -huh. there. You wake up the first time to go open it. I don't feel bad for you because you don't have a system. And I feel even less bad for you if it happens a second or a third time because you didn't create a system, right? And that's not a like technology system necessarily, but it is a system, right? So that can be anything you want. So 
moving forward, John, are you focusing more on growing Ohana Stay? Are you focusing more on growing the uh, tech tape? Yeah, so this is the beautiful part of the short-term rental industry. So I've grown Ohana Stay and I've learned and you know I've kind of came, come up with and created tech tape out of it. It's Ohana Stay is so systematized that right now uh, my wife is taking over my role. Uh, she's becoming the CEO of uh, Ohana Stay. There's still some things that are still locked up in my head just because I didn't create the system to get it out. So I'm transferring that into her, you know into her head right now. But you know she's it's about that, like also an application that you have in tech tape. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that would be that would be very data good. extraction. Yeah, if that if you have that as a, as a as a tech tape integration, I would love that because I have a lot of people that need stuff that is in my head that I haven't. Just it's not a tech tape solution, but Loom is the best way to uh, get yeah. it out of your head. So, oh. <laughs> so Loom, is, awesome. Loom is the solution to get things out of your head and yeah. transfer it to other people, right? Hundred percent. Yeah. So um, she has about eighty-five percent, you know, day-to-day -day operations of Ohana Day. I'm wor I'm actively working on transferring all that, and so my time is really focused on uh, on tech tape. Um, and so I don't think we mentioned this, but so there are three things that we do at Tech Tape. One is we provide revenue management services. That's just straight out, you know, we work with your clients and increase your revenue. And that's just, again, I use the technology day one and I've kind of figured out a process for kind of seeing what the market will bear. And so I use that approach out with clients all around the country. And I've even had clients uh, around the world. Number two is tech tape, the semi-customized workflows and dashboard that we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. So working with clients, really understanding what the problem, what, what the pain points are. And so tech tape is not about like recreating things that your PMS already has and trying to make it better. It's for people who understand, I have like two or three real pain points in my workflow in my business. Let's pinpoint those specific things and let's create a, a workflow that solves your problem, right? So it's not just like, we could do anything, so let's build everything. It's let's be really laser focused mm -hmm. and really tackle the things that are really uh, kind of hindering your business and your growth. And then the third service is, again, because I've done it so many times, I can consult to help people transition from one PMS or one top, uh, technology uh, onto another. Um, and just real quickly, when you're doing it on your own, everyone goes through the same exact experience, but everyone's running into that same problem over and over again, right? It goes back to, if you run into the same problem, there should be a solution. Oftentimes a new provider gives you like, all right, Friday next week, you're going to turn off the old software and you're going to turn on the new software. And that's like a recipe for disaster, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a way to kind of onboard and offboard gradually. And then there's even like a week time where we're like, all right, this is a week when doo doo is going to hit the fan, right? And um, so don't schedule any important meetings this week. Have everyone being ready for things to fall apart so that they can catch it, right? Mm -hmm. There's a process to this whole system. And so I can help you kind of transition without, you know, having this emergency where your business is falling apart. Yeah. That's amazing. That's that's super um super valuable on a lot of different different parts. I think I would love for you to expand on the revenue management and I'll ask you a, a specific question even, right? Like this has been a conversation that we had. Um we had one of the guys from uh, Price Labs on here and worldwide, I mean, in the US, right? Revenue is kind of slowing, market is a little bit softer. So what are some like little little maybe like uh, tips and tricks that you can share without obviously sharing all your sauce, but like some of the stuff that like the everyday listener is like, okay, if I implement this one or two things, this could help me. Yes. Uh, first of all, I don't consider it secret sauce. I'm very like open about like the process. It's, it's tedious to do it unless you have the systems, but uh, I just wrote an article on VRMA arrival with, that which says here are the three steps, right? So it's, it's oh, out amazing. there. Perfect. Right? Yeah. But the approach that I take is I'm, I'm less about what does the data tell me what the pricing should be or what the occupancy should be. And I'm more about what 
does the market tell me that they're able to bear, right? The, the guests who are booking. Mm -hmm. So the first step is kind of understanding the pacing in your market, how fast are different time points being booked up, right? So that's kind of the big picture trend understanding of your market. Mm -hmm. Then understanding what occupancy target are you trying to achieve, depending on different time frames, right? And then also understanding your risk profile, okay? So, you know, if you are if you want to make a lot of money and take a high risk, then you might be comfortable with an empty calendar, like confident that it's going to get booked up, right? That all impacts what your pricing strategy is. And not too many people talk about that, that aspect, right? Mm -hmm. And then, what so I the refer to having diamond hands last time on the last episode, right? It's having the diamond hands of like, Two weeks from now, like two weeks left in December, three weeks left in December, you still have openings. What do you do? Right? Exactly. Do you panic or not? Yeah. I well, I, I have this one client. Um, he, his risk tolerance was so high, right? Like he plays last man standing all the time, right? And then in early December, you know, the holiday days were not getting booked up. And then he like shifted course. And so then like, again, it wasn't like I, just drop the price, right? It was kind of like testing to see what, what will the market bear. Were your resistances, yeah. Exactly, right? And yeah. so we, we got it mostly filled up now, so we're, we're good. So the third part is your price is the lever that you switch to achieve that occupancy goal and that pacing goal that you establish, right? Mm -hmm. And so... If you kind of think of it that way, then you stop thinking about, well, I have a two bedroom condo, so it's worth somewhere between $150 and $500 per night. You get rid of that out of your head altogether. And you just let the market tell you, hey, at, at this time, is $150? No, that's not. Okay, maybe I have to drop lower. Now, you can't give it away. So there's some floor that you're not going to go beyond. But you're basically constantly floating and testing what the market will bear. And that's, that's like, again, there's no secret sauce. It's not rocket science, but that takes a process and a system and constant monitoring. It's like having hands on the steering wheel while you're driving. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what my revenue management service really is really having an expert, expert driver at the wheel rather than someone who could just make the car go, you know, forward and back. Yeah, no, I, I do get that. Um, I have a feeling that there is something else exciting that you've been working on um, yes. <laughs> that you might want to bring up because talking about revenue management, um, I think a big component of revenue management moving forward is really like owning, as our friend Mark Simpson says, right? Like owning your land where your house is versus building your home on somebody else's land. Um, so you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so speaking of Mark Simpson. Yeah. Um, speaking he... of the devil. He curated a book co-authored by many authors. Uh, it's called the, sorry, the Book Direct Blueprint. Mm -hmm. And it is, um, there are chapters written by, I mean, so many oh, wow. amazing, Everybody. Yeah. amazing tech players. And each chapter is about different aspects of running a successful short-term rental business with direct booking in mind, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so... I was fortunate enough uh, at, under the Tech Tape brand um, to be able to write a chapter um, on the technology piece. Um, that chapter is more on the, the semi-customized workflow, but it, it goes into my story of explanation of why the technology is so challenging in our industry and my journey to get to Tech Tape and then what, you know, how it could help other people. Um, it's coming out. I think next week is when it, so um, it'll be after probably this, this published, but um, really excited for it. Um, all the proceeds of, uh, of the, you know, sales are going to uh, food banks and things. So, you know, none of us did this to, uh, to retire or anything, but uh, I think it's really um, all the authors are sharing their expertise and their knowledge to help ideally streamline um, their journey into the short-term rental space. That's awesome. I love that. I love, I love that. Books are coming out. There's some great books coming out. A lot of great author. And we're so, so, like, we should all feel so grateful of how 
open-minded and, and willing to share everybody in our industry is because I mean, I don't, I've never worked in another industry, so I can't really say that like other industries are not like ours, but that's my, my personal feeling. I'm like, I don't think you could go into like banking or like hotels. Like I don't think Hilton would be like, yeah, these are all our systems and we're going to write a book about it and show it to you. And they'll be like, no, this is our, this is our sauce. Instead, yeah. most, most of the text that is involved in vacation rentals, they're like, yeah, sure. Let's play together. Like, let's integrate together. Let's, you know. Such I mean, a, a I'm, I'm friends with Andrew Kitchell of Wheelhouse. I'm friends with Anurag and Richie, you know, from Price Labs, right? And like, we just, you know, of course there's some, you know, secret sauce and whatever, but like 90% of the people in this industry are like, you know, let's, let's all share so the industry gets better and not, mm -hmm. I have some secret sauce that I don't want anybody else to know, right? Yeah, And I think that's where my passion in this industry comes from. I have been in other industry, e, right? Um, this is probably like my fourth or fifth career in my life right now. And so I've been in other industry where it's been very cutthroat and it's not a fun place to be. It, it, no, it's, I agree. It's really tiring, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I love that. Yeah. Sorry, Mike. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. You're on a roll there. No, I was just super, like I was just saying, like I am... Super grateful. And I, I don't even, so listening to you about tech tape being the visionary in our company, I don't even know, like it sounds exciting and I don't even know all the applications that could be. Oh, I can rattle off like 50, but I won't do that. Like, that's, just, that's what I mean, right? Like, stuff. and it's, to me, it's so amazing and that it, it brings me back to like, again, going back to like being grateful. Like if it wasn't for uh, Tasha and like her mind in creating systems, if it wasn't people like you, John, that like, it's like, okay, great. Let us make things better. I would still be like taking a reservation on an Excel spreadsheet and like having no idea how to do anything and being like that little crazy guy that just runs around and does maintenance Wednesdays where I used to pressure clean buildings and do all the shit versus like being like, dude, just find yourself a implementer and then find yourself somebody that can help you. Even John, like if you're, if you don't have an implementer, just get on a call with John and be like, John. These are the things that I keep banging my head against. Can you help me? And I'm happy. Um, so I'm, my wife hates me for this, but um, my, my calendar is actually, you know, anyone could go to the link and schedule a 30 minute call, right? We might at need to change of, that after this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, at least as of now, right? I'm happy my, to see My wife would hate that too. That's right one now. of the things that she's like, why are you always on phone calls? I'm like, I don't know. Like, People need things. Um, I, you know, I, 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 I block out times where I'm not going to be available, but I'm happy to kind of share and like point people in the right direction and everything, right? It's like, it's not like, you know, sit, sit down with me and like, you have to pay me like the second that we, we get on the phone. Mm -hmm. I, I actually want people to benefit from my experience and my knowledge. Not that I know everything, but the parts that I do know. And a lot of them, I, if, you, if you put in enough effort, you could actually do it yourself, I, I think, right? But it does take a lot of time, effort, and energy to kind of put it, pull it all together. And so I've kind of pulled that together, and that's where, you know, it's a, it's a niche service that I think can benefit, you know, a lot of people. And Mike, you said you can rattle off uh, 50. Um, I'd be happy to chat with you afterwards and build <laughs> one or two for you. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. I appreciate it. Perks of the job. No, that's great, okay. man. Yeah, because again, like the further that you go and the more that you put yourself in kind of that CEO seat and you listen to feedback from the team, the more of these little nuances that you see, again, when you have good communication with the team, it's like, what are these bottlenecks? And I'm all about like KPIs and reports. And I'm like, why can't I just get this in a report? And they're like, well, dude, you got to do this and then this and then this and then this. And I'm like, all right, well, we'll figure it out. How do we, how do we make that work? Um, so... Yeah, Wave like, the wand, just make it happen. Make the magic happen. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why you're asking me to do it. Like, you guys know, I don't know, figure it out. It's all right. So, um, no, that's amazing. And I, you know, I, first off, John, I want to thank you again for coming on here. If you guys can't tell, John is uh, a brilliant human and one of the most humble people I know. Don't let him fool you. He's a friggin' brainiac and uh, he's a brilliant operator. And uh, he's always in the room with a lot of the heavy hitters and he's always the most humble guy there. But I bet he's one of the smartest guys there every single time. No, no, and no, no, no. Uh, I don't give me that. Don't give me that. I believe that wholeheartedly. So 100%. I, I want to thank you for coming on here, man, seriously, and, and sharing this. And um, 
guys, especially if you're a little more seasoned operator and you're starting to do like notice these things again, just like he said, there were certain things that like I didn't get from the PMS I was using. So I went to another one and then I went to another one and then I went to another one and then I went back to a different one. Right. And it's none of them are perfect. They're not. I, people ask me all the time, what's the best PMS? I'm like, I don't know. What, what, it depends on you and your business and what you can live with and what's a must for you. Mm -hmm. right? But working with somebody like John, it's like, all right, well, I can't get this and this out of this PMS, but maybe we can duct tape this thing together or tech tape yeah. this thing together to get these things to talk to fill in the gap. And then I don't have to go through the pain of switching all of that over. And if you haven't switched PMSs, I will tell you, it sucks. It sucks. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> like, it's, it's horrible. Don't do it. Because the worst part is you lose all your data. Like, that's what people don't talk about. It's just most PMSs would be like, can I import this data in? And they'll be like, either no. And they'll be like, yeah, you have to format it to our thing. And, and then maybe it took you don't me five to tries with QC to get my data in. And it wasn't even all the data. It was just the essential data that I needed. And I mean, five back and forth of importing it. No, nope, this is wrong delete it, import it again. Like after having my team QC it every single time, like it took months and it yeah. sucked. And that's the thing that we, we overstressed at the beginning is like, if you have a big vision for yourself in a moment of power where you're like, I know this is the business I want to grow for myself, understand the foundation that you need. And even if you're like, are like, I'm so far away from here, understand that like something, some moves have to be made early on. If not, that you can do them later, but it's just going to be time consuming and painful. And maybe you just want to have the experience so you can be like, wear it like a badge of honor. If that's you, <laughs> go for it, baby. Like, we, yeah. don't, we don't mind, yeah. right? Just to be like, oh, yeah, it sucks. I experienced it too. Okay, cool. You can say that and not do it. <laughs> nobody, would know, nobody would know the difference, you know? Uh, John, where do people find uh, uh, tech tape? Where do people find Ohana Stay if they want to come to Honolulu? Honolulu, right? Is that what you said? Yeah, Honolulu. Honolulu. It sounds so much better when you say it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. That's my social media uh, platform of choice. So if you look up John on or Tech Tape or Hana Stay on LinkedIn, you'll be able to find me. Um, my website is gettechtape.com, G-E-T-T-E-C-H-T-A-P-E.com. Um, and if you are coming to Honolulu, you can go to my direct booking website, www.ohana stay, no S at the end. So that's O H A N A S T A Y dot com. And, um, you know, if you're listening to this, if you mentioned uh, a code return guest 10, then we can get a 10% uh, friends and family discount for you for that stay. So, no, um, love that. Appreciate that. Thank you, John. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I guess a lot of people are going to go to Hawaii now. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I only have 10 properties, okay? So John's calendar is booked and his properties are booked for the next two years now. <laughs> but I wow. really appreciate being on, on the show, guys. I, you know, this was great. Uh, I love what you guys are doing and all the education, your, your you know, STR uh, Wealth Conference, all that stuff. I'm going to be there in, uh, it's in March, right? March, yeah, March 20th to the 22nd. Be there in March, yep. And yep. Uh, I'm really excited to be back there uh, and learn from you guys. So, love it. Love it. Thank well, you. John, thank you again. Actually, we didn't give it. Hang on. Yeah. I didn't drop the last question on him. What am I doing? What am I yeah, doing? Sorry. So, the last question that we ask all of our guests is What is your number one secret to success with short term rentals? I, I, I think. I think it's what I said before. It's when you, because there's so many moving parts, when you run into a, a problem, build a system around it. Uh, I think that that's really been the reason why I haven't scaled so much is because I, in some ways, I'm a perfectionist, right? And I so didn't get that scale... vibe at all, John. No, <laughs> PMS is definitely not a giveaway at all. Yeah. <laughs> so scaling to like, I've built my system so that I can scale, but I haven't scaled, right? And it's, 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 it's a decision, but the secret is when you run into a problem, figure out a systematic solution to it and not just solving it at that point because there's so many moving parts. And if you do that, you know, you, you'll build a pretty powerful company. Love it. Love wow. it. Well, John, thank you again so much for being on here. Truly appreciate you. And, uh, Guys, go check out Tech Tape. Go check out Hana Stays. Go hit up John Ann on LinkedIn. 
and uh, come say hi to him in Nashville. So awesome. Thanks, awesome. guys. Great talking to you. Likewise. All right. All right. Take care, everybody. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.